everyone. Uh, another special vlog post movie review. Um, this time talking about Detective Pikachu, which I just got out of seeing. Kind of a bit of a disclaimer here. I I played Pokemon as a kid in an emulator, original uh, Red and Blue. And if you if you're one of the people who's played those older Pokemon games in the emulator, you know that you basically can make it about as far as uh, the Pokemon Tower before you run into a really nasty bug and can't. That's uh, an anti-piracy measure. And so I never really got around to like beating that game. And I have played other Pokemon games off and on. And of course, I've watched the show not with any degree of regularity, but I I have a passing familiarity to it, which actually puts me in a good position for talking about the Pokemon this Pokemon movie because. Well, it's a kid's film. It is a kid's film, but it is, it's a theatrical release kid's film. It's a movie that parents are going to see, with parents will be seeing with their children. It's, I doubt it is going to be a situation where mom or dad gets the kid ticket to go see uh, Detective Pokemon, then they slip out of the theater and go to their screening of Avengers or of John Wick, but it's actually since both of those movies are longer than Detective po than Detective Pokemon uh, Pikachu. So, well, this is like a little over ninety minutes, like hundred and five, about hour forty five, something like in that range. Anywho, um. So again, since I'm doing this vlog the w opening week and the video is going to go up the following Wednesday, I am going to keep the spoilers to a minimum. So, the low spoiler version of the movie with information that you may have seen in the trailers is our protagonist is Tim Goodman, whose dad, Harry Goodman, yes, it's, the joke is not stated, but you can consider it as effectively implied, is a detective in the city of Rhyme City. And while in Rhymes and his dad is missing presumed deceased. Um he is declared he has been indeed been declared dead. So the so Tim goes to collect his father's affair um things and put his affairs in order. And it's important to mention Rhyme City, unlike other cities from other Pokemon works, um, Rhyme City is not a, is a city where there are no Pokemon trainers, um, Pokemon dueling is um, bidden officially by law, um, Pokemon are independent citizens. And as so, uh, now you will have... A, with the police force, you'll have cops partnered with Pokemon, but it is not a trainer Pokemon relationship. It is mutual equals, effectively. And so while he, so while Tim is trying to get his dad's affairs in order, um, he encounters two people, um, technically three, because one of them is because one of the person in the Pokemon, the other one, of course, is a Pokemon. Um, he encounters a reporter named Lucy Stevens, who is, well, she is an unpaid intern at a news agency that is, um, that is a knockoff of, like, well, it's not a knockoff of CNN, but it's, it's your standard big fict fictional news agency, um, with, who's working on a big story about something that, that, that Tim's dad, Harry, was on the, was on the cutting edge of finding something dark and sinister in the city. She just knows it, and she because she's an intrepid reporter who hangs on to a story like a hungry, um, I can't think of a good dog-type Pokemon right now, but because, again, I'm, I'm a more of a casual, I'm a filthy casual Pokemon fan, but a angry dog-type Pokemon, pick one and post it in the comments on a pork chop or a T-bone steak, or what have you. Um, one of them on a big hunk of meat. So, 
she she she's found the story and she's not letting it go. Tim still trying to cope with all this. He's not so sure. So he his apartment and ends up running into Pikachu, who can talk to him, but only to him. Um, and this Pikachu is his dad's partner. Uh, he's also got amnesia related to the circumstances behind uh, Tim's father's disappearance. And so the question, and so the question becomes, okay, clearly these are linked. What happened here? What caused this? And maybe Tim's father is still alive. Um, and so the investigation goes from there. And in case you hadn't figured out from, hey, intrepid reporter, um, there are a lot of noir tropes in order here. Like, up to and including Harry Goodman's office apartment has a neon sign out the window that is flashing and changing colors. Um, or blinking on and off and with the color change, which is what you got a lot of. Um, both the blinking, the, the common thing in old noir detective stories where you'd have the hotel room where somebody's holed up or the office of the detective where you have the sign of the building outside blinking on and off, providing a minimal atmospheric level of light to build a mood for the scene, but not necessarily fully illumin illuminate everything, and also letting you save a little bit of money on uh, set design and that sort of thing. And when we got into, moved into color, a lot of works, like in... Like, say we get in the 50s, where you're still getting some noir in the 50s. Like, not like neo-noir, the 70s and 80s, but still noir directors, noir actors, noir style, but with color film, then you, you, you would be using a lot of these same shots, but we introduced color, and there were colored neon lights, sort of thing. Um, like, you have the Trippet Reporter, you have the flashing, the... The not for the flash, but the deliberately blinking on and off lights outside the window of the of the office. Um, various other factors. The like the only thing we don't get is the goons for the bot for the um, person responsible roughing up our protagonist and saying, "Hey, you're too close. You better drop the case." Like it is. This is very much a. I'm not called hard boiled. It's much more of a soft boiled in, uh, detective story. Like, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It's a children's, it's a kids' film. It is, however, still a hard boiled detective movie. It is a film which, like, for example, Chinatown actively channels elements from the history of. Uh, Los Angeles, the film industry, and the rise of the freeways. Um, and the impacts that had on minority communities. It's taking a chunk out of real life and making a hard-boiled detective story around it, but where it becomes in a kid's film is instead of African-American or Chinese communities that are displaced by the rise of the freeway, it is Toontown. Whereas with Detective Pikachu... You don't have the same degree of subtext of complicated social subtext that you had with Who Framed Roger Rabbit um, with the movie. And while the stakes are significant, the in when once everything is laid out on the table. There's and there is a certain degree of peril at very point various points of the film. There's never really that sense of like with Who Framed Roger Rabbit of unease in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, like Chinatown before it. There is a sense that everyone is kind of dirty to a certain degree, and the question is how much um, and. In Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it's Her Eddie Valiant, as the last name suggests, is 
he well, he's a knight in sour armor, but he's still a knight in armor nonetheless. He will go like he will do the right thing. He has to be portrayed goaded and persuaded to do it, but he has a sense of ethics and code of honor that he just can't let go of. Uh, while other people will other people are more willing to do so. Um whereas with Detective Pikachu there's not that sense there's not the sense of gray. Because Who Framed Roger Rabbit, again, I have to kind of make the contrast here because it's the closest and the most high profile example of a semi noir story aimed for younger audiences to this degree is in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, again, like with Chinatown and with other noir films, you have a color palette of various degrees of gray to black with not necessarily a beacon of white or light with um, Harry, with uh, Eddie Valiant, but a, a significantly lighter patch. He, Eddie Valiant, is a knight in sour, sour armor. He is um, a drunk, disgraced detective, not because he's bad at his job, not because he's compromised his ideals, but because his ideals don't necessarily hold up in the light of the world around him. Um, that is not the case in this movie. I mean, there are, like, it's clear that Rhyme City has a seedy underbelly. We have, we go to an under, it's in the trailer, we go to an underground Pokemon fight club. Um, but it's not like, like, if you're expecting, for example, Team Rocket to show up in this movie at all, they're not. And I think that's actually to a degree a missed opportunity because I like the idea of like Team Rocket to an extent representing a portion of the CD underbelly of the Pokemon world. And having them involved, even if it's just as a red herring, um, having them present, one, it gives the world a little more breadth and little connection to the show, but also gives the sense of, okay, Rhyme City is a big deal. It's a shining beacon of equality between humans and Pokemon. But there's still shadows cast by that light, and there are dark things that thrive in those shadows. Whereas the darkest we get here is, again, the Pokemon Fight Club, which... It's basically like the normal Pokemon dueling that you get in Pokemon, like at, at the at the Pokemon gyms between trainers. It's just the difference is it's in a fight club, it's in the fight club environment, which makes, which actually in a weird way makes it even less dark and like less questionable than in the main Pokemon universe because now it becomes less dog fighting or cat fighting the cat fighting but it's less animal fighting and trainers and animal trainers making animals fight and more like a manager or a coach and their and their boxer it almost makes it, it, it in a weird way it makes it better it's like rocky balboa and um i i haven't seen i not even make a mission i haven't seen rocky but it's like it's like boxing anime or whatever, where you have the trainer and you have our your the scrappy boxer. It doesn't make the po it, it makes it better in a weird way. It makes it less skeezy. It like when your dark and seedy underbelly feels less dark and seedy than the actual than the implications of the actual anime. And the video games, it gotta scratch your head a little bit. So, there's that. Aside from that point, the film is very nicely done. Again, this is one of the best video game films of all time. Um, Silent Hill was a strong, was a generally strong horror film in its own respects. Uh, it has its issues with how it meshes with the, the concept of the games, but it works really well. 
Mortal Kombat basically recognized, hey, the plot of Mortal Kombat the fighting game is Enter the Dragon with significantly more pronounced um, uh, stakes and a strong supernatural element and leaned into that. Um, and it worked. Um, so that's how, that's why that, that film is, is really well regarded and justifiably so. Detective Pikachu recognizes, and I haven't played Detective Pikachu game, but when it comes to Pokemon, it recognizes the strongest points, or the appeal of Pokemon as a franchise is less Pokemon battles. It's less Pokemon as like would we that's not it wouldn't be doing heavyweight champion Pikachu. It wouldn't be um uh the Pikachu the boxing movie. It would be it's it's about the bond between um the the Pikachu between Pokemon and their trainer as a, as a friendship as a person being a person and a pet like probably like put this in perspective and put this another way one of the trailers they played before this movie was the sequel to a dog's purpose and that trailer looked super saccharine and dopey and dumb and like I'm like I've gotten everything I need to know about this movie out of this trailer. I don't need to see the film. But on the other hand, conceptually, it is the perfect movie to stick, put your trailer in front of Pokemon because that is a big part of the po- of the, the, the concept. It's the reason why after so many seasons, it's like the main pairing of Pikachu, uh, of a Pokemon and trainers for what Ashes has is is Pikachu because that is Pikachu's his first Pokemon and it's his, it is a friendly relationship more than anything else. So that narrative works performance wise. Performance wise, um, Pikachu is incredibly expressive, a very well done character, like. Speaking of other video game movie stuff, like we had the trailer before this movie for Sonic the Hedgehog, um, the one which led to the creators of the movie saying, hey, we're going to redo that character design. Um, but it really encapsulates, okay, going, seeing that trailer before this movie and just seeing how much Sonic the Hedgehog missed the boat. Because Pikachu is an incredible, like all the poke, actually, like all the peak Pokemon in this movie, Pikachu in particular, but all the Pokemon in general are incredibly expressive characters, uh, and they do a tremendous job of provoking our emotional response from the audience. Um, there are a few, there are a few, I'm not crying, you're crying moments in that movie, and a lot, and they're brought about by reactions to a digital fluffy lightning rat. So, yeah. Like, it, it nails it, and it is helped by the fact that Ryan Reynolds is an excellent actor and nails his performance. The rest of the cast is great as well. Justice Smith is fantastic. Um, I have not seen him in anything before. Um, apparently he was in Jurassic World, The Fallen Kingdom. I haven't seen that. I'm probably not going to see it. I'm not, but I am never really into the Jurassic World chunk of movies. Ken Watanabe has a bit of a role, not as much as, um, it's played up in the trailer as, uh, it has Lieutenant uh, Hideo Yoshida, who's, um, Basically, was handling the investigating the presumed death of um, Harry Goodman, and we have running the, the sort of the, the the people who run the city. It's run by the uh, Clifford Enterprises Corporation, which is um, Howard Clifford, played by Bill Nye, who 
is a fantastic British actor who is incapable of phoning in a performance to anything, as seen by his performance in Pirates of the Caribbean movies and in numerous other stuff. And then an act, British actor who had never heard of before, Chris Gere, um, who plays uh, Howard's son, Roger. Um, I'm like, looking at his IMDb profile, um, or there's Wikipedia page, and there is nothing he's been in that I have seen. Um, like, he was in an episode of Death in Paradise. He had a bit of a recurring role in Water and Family, which I've never watched. Um, yeah. So, i never seen him before, but he puts in a really good, enjoyable performance, and I, he, he nails his stuff. It's great. Other than that, um, I, I dug it. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I saw it in the theater. I'm glad I saw it in 3D. I do recognize, again, that, as I stated before, this is a soft-boiled detective story. It's not, not a cozy. It's a film which presents the trappings of the hard-boiled detective film, detective um, story, but inside has a very soft center. So... If you're expecting a Who Framed Roger Rabbit level of grit, you're going to be kind of disappointed. But on the other hand, it's a film where the kids will get a kick out of it, and adults, if, particularly if you're grown-ups who like uh, detective, film, detective stories, you'll get a kick out of this too. Um, it's not going to. It's not going to be as have the sense of peril or anything, anything necessarily semi-disturbing in imagery that you got from, say, for example, your friend Roger Rabbit, but depending on what your kids can handle, that may be a point in its favor. Um, and also, as a casual Pokemon fan, uh, going into this movie, I knew a very basic amount of po about Pokemon going in, and what I saw in the movie, like, I was able to follow it wasn't too much of an issue and any and the things of pokemon lore which are plot essential get explained in the movie clearly concisely and without too much issue so there's that as always I'd like to hear your thoughts about the film please post them in the comments below um and as with the review of avengers endgame please wait oh about three months from the film's release so let's say august uh, July, in that range, before actually, so July or July 2019, post, before you post spoilers, just give everybody a chance to see the movie and let it get out on home video or video on demand. And next week, I have John Wick 3. I've reviewed the first two John Wick movies thus far. Might as well round out the series. Catch you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.